18 people are killed with a gun in South Africa every day. The recent Oscar Pistorius case is just one example. The country's violent crime rate, together with what many South Africans believe is incompetence and corruption on the part of the police, mean that fear plays a significant role in the need to own handguns for self-defence. The loophole, however, is created where an average of 53 guns are lost or stolen from licensed civilian gun owners every day, which then enters the illegal gun trade and is again used in violent crimes committed towards civilians. South Africa's history, like that of America and like that of various other countries in the world, were built around the use of firearms. So, in order to ensure safety, whilst you have f uh, firearms in the country, it's very important that government, as well as private institutions and associations, continue with their educational task by teaching people how to safely and responsibly use and possess firearms. It's not just about uh, people's cultural rights. Uh, it's about a country that has a violent history and guns have contributed significantly to that. Handguns are the primary weapon of choice for licensed gun owners because they want it for self-defense. It's the primary weapon of choice for criminals. We know that when you have a home invasion, the first thing the perpetrator asks for is, where's your safe, where's your gun? And so it, it just becomes this vicious cycle of the legal pool fueling the illegal pool. Because I was exposing the gun, at the age of 13, I started to do housebreaking. And is where I started to own a gun. That was a 38 special to us. Our target will be the people who are oh, oh, having the licensed gun, the security, it can be the material, whoever that is owning a gun. It was dark. I opened my eyes and I saw two black shadows against the blackness of the bedroom wall. And I realized somebody had come into our house and were in our bedroom. I saw the flash, I heard a bang, a crack, and something hit me, which I thought hit me in the neck. And I was down and I realized I'd been shot. Apparently there were five shots. I remember two. I've still got a bullet hole in the wall behind my bed. I was pointing my gun on his ear and then he took his gun. Like I, I can see like when he's taking his gun and then he shot me he and my family and then I shot him. And then I took the gun and then I ran away. I'm not sure whether the person died or, yeah. Having a gun-free society does not mean that you have a gun-free society. It only means that you have disarmed the law-abiding citizen without having disarmed the criminal. Having a gun does not make you safer. And gun-free would argue, not only does it make you and your family safer, it makes all of us less safe. And it's not about not liking guns. It's about having a vision of a society where we are safe. But, you know, no easy answers on that one, I'm afraid. I don't have the answers. With residential robberies having increased by 50% since 2005, and 97% of robbers being armed, shouldn't South Africans have the right to defend themselves? But with data that suggests that you are four times more likely to have your own gun used against you than using it in self-defense, it would seem that gun ownership in South Africa comes at quite a high price. Can the illegal gun trade be controlled more effectively, or should guns be banned entirely? Salome Fancel reporting from Johannesburg, South Africa.